Mohammed Kusel for inviting us to come in and participate at this panel session, side event. And also we welcome all the uh, ladies and gentlemen, all of you are here, and I can see some of our friends from the Tamil diaspora also here. We welcome you. We are glad that we can have the discussion. Uh, and also from Sri Lanka Embassy and several others representing the various other countries. Uh, if I go back to what uh, Professor Grussell has been talking about, in 2006, we all know that the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Global Counter-Terrorism Strategy, a very, very important milestone for the world. In that, the UN members resolved the following to consistently, unequivalently and strongly condemn terrorism in all its forms and manifestations committed by whomever, whoever and for whatever purpose, as it constitutes one of the most serious threats to international peace and security. So, to take urgent action, again, action to prevent and combat terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. To recognize that international cooperation and any measures that are undertake to prevent and combat terrorism must comply with the obligations under international law. There are many terrorist organizations in the world. People remember them by heart. But let me take you take your attention to a note that appeared in 2008 in the FBI website, the official website. It goes like this. As far as terrorist groups go, this particular one has a quite a resume. They perfected the use of suicide bombers. They invented the suicide belt. Pioneered the use of women in suicide attacks. Murdered some thousands of people, mostly civilians. And assassinated two world leaders. The only terrorist organization in the world to do so so far. No, it is not Al-Qaeda. It is not Hezbollah. Or not even Hamas. It is a group called Liberation Tigers of Tamilila. Or the Tamil Tigers in short. This is the terrorist group fighting for a separate state called Tamil Ila in Sri Lanka. This is FBI official website. So very clearly, the FBI website has identified as far as 2008 that LTT was a terrorist organization. We know that LTT was defeated by the Sri Lankan armed forces in 2009, many years later. By that time, LTT terrorist attacks and the war against terrorism has resulted in deaths of more than 100,000 people, which included Sinhalese, Tamils, Muslims, mostly civilians, and also 27,000 military personnel from Sri Lanka side and more than 10,000 or 15,000 from LTT side. Now, if you go back and look at LTT, which was formed in 1975 and became one of the most brutal terrorist organizations in the world and fought a war against the Sri Lanka government for almost 27 years, had two phases. One was the military arm. The other one was the political arm. Whilst the military arm was engaged in terrorist attacks, suicide attacks, border village killings and all those things, the military wing managed the administration of the areas that were under their control and also international relations. They were, they were showing a different face to the international community. And this group has had a very, very powerful international network. And it is this international network which raised the funds for LTT activities and also managed the international affairs for the LTT. And in 2009, we know the humanitarian operation in Sri Lanka took place in which finally, after almost 30 years, the LTT was completely defeated and the LTT military wing who were remaining in Sri Lanka was completely wiped out. Now, we should not be misguided here, thinking that the LTT is over. Because it is only those who were in Sri Lanka at that time who got wiped out, who got killed. But those who had left Sri Lanka before May 19, 2009, and also who were already operating overseas, raising funds for LTT, managing relations for LTT, lobbying for LTT, Remained. Nothing happened to them. They are still at, still at large. Now, the war is over. Several years have passed. Now, these operatives have taken a fresh approach. Suddenly, they have become human rights champions. They are lobbying international governments. They are lobbying 
politicians, the lobbying international organizations. And they are talking about human rights problem in Sri Lanka. And the world is listening. And if you look at what happened since 2009, the sequence of activities very clearly shows what happened. In 2009, the day, very day, the war was ended, 19 May 2009, 17 countries led by Germany asked for a special meeting of Human Rights Council to discuss the situation in Sri Lanka. They have never asked anything like that. When thousands of civilians were killed in Sri Lanka by TT, nobody visited Sri Lanka, nobody sympathized with those people, but when the war ended, suddenly they wanted to discuss the Sri Lanka situation. But fortunately at that time, we have 47 members in this esteemed council, majority of the countries opposed that. And they passed a resolution endorsing the victory of the Sri Lankan forces. And they said, the war is over, we must commend the Sri Lankan forces. And now the country must get ready for the post war situation. So the first resolution that was passed in this very council acknowledged the end of the war and considered it a good thing. But these sinister forces that I mentioned didn't give up. They had enough money. But all the money that was collected to fund the war was now left with them. They could spend that money to lobby all over the world. And the lobbying started. And what we saw in 2012, another resolution came. Another resolution came saying that we must go and investigate what happened during the war in Sri Lanka. Of course, it looked very innocent. And it passed. And 2013, another resolution came. Now it had gone a little beyond. Now, other than talking about the war situation, he started talking about the political situation in Sri Lanka. So other things that should look, look into. And then came the 2014 resolution, a very lengthy resolution, which had a gamut of issues that was addressed, not only the war, human rights, political situation, so many things, in fact, in interfering into the sovereignty of the country was included in this 2014 resolution. In that resolution, the Human Rights Council asked the, the, the commissioner of the human rights, uh, the office of human rights uh, uh, commission to go and carry out an investigation as to what happened in Sri Lanka from 2012 up to 2011. And they said that is because there's a particular report called lessons learned in Sri Lanka and just that period. That is wrong because that particular report, LLRC, was presented for a specific purpose. Because in 2002 in Sri Lanka, a peace accord was signed. But that didn't solve the problem. So that report was to find out what happened. Despite the fact that you, the country and the entity were trying to sign a peace accord, what happened after that? That doesn't mean the war was confined to that period. War started long before. Since 1975, LTT was killing people. So if anybody wants to go and do an investigation as to what happened, then they should have investigated what happened since 1975 for a period of, during a period of 30 long years. That didn't happen. They confined to a very short period. And then from that, it stemmed the resolution 30 slash 1, which had 20 clauses in that. Out of that, only one refers to LTT. Only one refers to LTT. The whole issue was about a war where the Sri Lankan government was combating terrorism. But the final resolution that is passed in this Human Rights Council has only one reference to LTT. How can that happen? And then the most interesting thing, most important thing for everybody to understand is what Professor Guzel explained exactly. The Human Rights Commission Council, when they, when they mandated this report by the Office of Human Rights Commissioner, very clearly referred to combating terrorism. Combating terrorism was the word. But when the report came, that word was missing. The report referred to something else. It defined LTT as a non-state armed group. A non-state armed group is very different to a terrorist organization. How can that happen? This can't be a mistake. This can't be an innocent mistake or omission. It's a deliberate thing. Somebody deliberately attempted to mislead the world, the United Nations, Human Rights Council, that LTT is not a terrorist organization. When you don't define LTT as a terrorist organization, you are protected from this global anti-terrorism strategy. You are protected from that. That is the whole idea. But now we say it is not correct.
we request the Human Rights Council, at least now, to take the right approach. If FBI defined LTT as a terrorist organization as far back as 2008, if 32 countries said ban LTT, your member countries, how come your final report to Sri Lanka says that it is not a terrorist organization, that it is only a non-state armed group? It is not correct. You have to define. LTT as a terrorist group. Why are we saying that we have to define LTT as a terrorist group? It is because the people who funded the LTT activities are still at large. They are not dead. They are not gone. They are there. So as long as the financiers of all these LTT atrocities are there, how can you say that terrorism is over? That can manifest any time, in any way. Therefore, we need to take action. There has to be investigation on that. There again, we must emphasize on one more thing. We are not against terrorists. Because Sri Lanka belongs to all nationalities. It is Sinhalese, Tamils, Muslims, Burgers, Malays, whoever was born in Sri Lanka. Who is a citizen of Sri Lanka? It is their country. They have the freedom to live anywhere. They have the freedom to do anything in their country. There is no discrimination. There shouldn't be any discrimination. But we cannot accept terrorists. Terrorism is a different thing. It's not an ethnic issue. It is not a racial issue. It's a terrorist issue that we had with the LTT. Therefore, the world must now go and investigate those who are remaining in the inter LTT's international network. They are at large. And once that investigation starts, only the justice will be made. Thank you very much.